Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Green hydrogen has the attention of the presidency at last, as government leaders begin to grasp its potential economic significance. Terence Creamer joins me to unpack recent developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why is the presidency's backing for the development of a national green hydrogen strategy important? I think it's important because while there's a lot of recognition that South Africa is a good location for the uh, production of green hydrogen, South Africa's focus uh, hitherto has really been uh, at a scientific level, a research and development level, led out of the Department of Science and Technology. The, uh, uh, we've got this Hydrogen Society roadmap that's underway. But many other countries have taken it up to a sort of industrial policy level and economic level, uh, have integrated green hydrogen into their stimulus packages as they try to recover from COVID. About 20 countries around the world have now have national hydrogen strategies these are either geared towards the importation of hydrogen as uh, countries realize they're going to need this uh, energy carrier to help them uh, decarbonize those sectors that are hard to abate. Things like steel making, cement making, heating in industry, and also like long haul transport, marine, uh, using it to produce, for instance, carbon neutral jet fuels, etc. So South Africa really is a little bit, even though we've had hydrogen on our agenda for many years, at a science and technology level, we're a little bit behind given our potential as a, poten uh, as a production hub for the world of green hydrogen in developing this. So having the presidency's weight behind a green hydrogen strategy is important. It's also important in a context where I think a lot of the attention of, for instance, of the energy department has been on electricity um, and the crisis there and that we haven't seen the, the, the sort of emphasis around green hydrogen coming out of that department. So the presidency taking the lead and getting the strategy uh, together is important. We are seeing signs that the Department of, uh, or the Minister of um, Trade, Industry and Competition is also alive to this possibility, seeing hydrogen and renewables, as he says, as the energy carriers and the fuels of the 21st century. So there's a, a growing awareness around the industrial potential there. So I think it's a, it's a very important signal. Uh, the presidency obviously has massive convening power. There are a lot of uh, balls in the air around that. Uh, as I said, we've got the Hydrogen Society roadmap under drafting, which will be an element, uh, a sort of broad vision that will help us define our strategy. But I think we really do need a strategy in place if we're wanting to really upscale and take advantage of this opportunity that's starting to emerge globally. Why is South Africa seen as a good location to produce green hydrogen? The main reason is we have the triumvirate of good solar res uh, resources, uh, excellent wind resources, and land. Those are the th three, com three elements that you really need. Obviously with green hydrogen you also need water, and we are a water constrained country. But uh, all the research that's coming around out around the world on green hydrogen is that water is not a binding constraint, even for water scarce uh, countries. Really what you need is the cheap renewable electricity and that relies on your solar resource, your wind resource and your land, which we've got. The water, uh, you know, there's two, a couple of sources that South Africa can look at. Uh, obviously desalination is a big opportunity and you'd oversize uh, your facilities, not only to produce hydrogen, but also to desalinate. And the cost there, uh, CSIR study, showed are not prohibitive if you're doing the desalination route. But South Africa is also going to be decommissioning a lot of coal capacity over the next decades. And those coal plants in South Africa, we, we know that how much coal they consume and we know that they uh, are around those sort of resources. But one of the resources that they consume largely is water too. So if they are transitioned out of coal production into, for instance, more renewable energy resource production, we're going to have water released there. Then we have the opportunity to, to, uh, to treat and process uh, mine water that's been contaminated as well. We have that from our gold mines, but we also have those from the cold mines that will be closing. So there's an economic opportunity there. So we've got the solar, we've got the wind, we've got the land, and water's not a constraint, even though we are a dry country. So we are a, because we've got relatively better or more potent solar and wind resources than, say, a country like Germany, which is going to be a large importer uh, of uh, uh, green hydrogen into the future, uh, we're going to be able to produce this relatively cheaper, this, this, this very important energy carrier. 
The issue is then how much do you consume locally um, uh, to, to, um, uh, to decarbonize your own hard to abate sectors and then export those products as green products. And that's going to be very important, especially with the European Union stating clearly that they're going to be implementing carbon border adjustments, which are basically tariffs on carbon heavy products. So we need our products, whether they're mineral products or whether they're manufactured products, to be uh, produced with decarbonized uh, processes. Decarbonized electricity we know is going to come from solar and wind mostly, uh, but also these other products like uh, steel or green ammonia, they need to come from a decarbonized uh, hydrogen source. So we are in a very uh, good sweet spot as a country in the sense that we may be losing certain uh, exports into the future. Coal, as we know, there's a lot of demand for coal immediately as countries recover from COVID and consume more coal. But it, over, the, over time, the export of coal from South Africa is going to decline. And what we should do is try and match the rise in our export of green hydrogen or green hydrogen derivatives like green ammonia, like green, green steel, etc., uh, to match that, that declining profile and probably exceed it. And uh, new research that came out this week uh, shows that we have very really, uh, good potential to scale up to about uh, three and a half more million tons a year of green hydrogen. And we would incrementally need to invest in that new capacity, the solar plants, the wind plants, as well as the electrolyzer plants that are the, the key to producing this green hydrogen and spend about, uh, it's like a hundred, over a hundred billion uh, dollars that would need to be invested between now and 2050 to scale up to that sort of level. So it's a really big opportunity for South Africa. As we can see, the presidency is alive to it at last. And uh, hopefully our energy department will also uh, catch up. And we definitely see that the trade and industry and the environmental departments are definitely also alive to this opportunity. There's also very real financing support coming through from Germany. Yeah, so this is not uh, any more just about plans in the future. There's um, immediate opportunities that are starting to arise. We know, for instance, that Sassel, it's a stay in business, it's an existential crisis for Sassel. They need to move as fast as possible uh, away from their coal-heavy businesses and their gas-heavy businesses to things like green hydrogen and producing uh, clean jet fuel, for instance, using their fisher trops processes and repurposing them with green hydrogen. So we know they've got some plans, but the German government, because they have green hydrogen at the center of their, their, their stimulus and restructuring and their uh, Green New Deal, basically, that Europe is sort of driving. It's a massive multi-trillion dollar uh, initiative that's coming out of Europe. Uh, Germany knows they're going to need to be importers of green hydrogen. They don't have the land, the wind, and the solar. And they're looking for international partners where they have already got established trading relationships with. And uh, they're particularly keen on Africa. And they're particularly keen on, at the moment, on the two most advanced uh, countries, uh, maybe three most advanced in, in thinking about green hydrogen, and that's Morocco, which is right on their doorstep, South Africa, and Namibia, which they have historical relationships with. And they say Morocco and South Africa have the most advanced prospects. They're now putting money down on the table. 200 million euro um, is now being made available to try and stimulate projects. This is going to be very good concessional loan finance, uh, cheap money, and it's going to try and unlock one, the production of green hydrogen opportunities. At this early stage, green hydrogen is more expensive than, for instance, uh, gray or black hydrogen, hydrogen that's produced from coal and gas. We aren't really looking at pink hydrogen, which is hydrogen that comes from nuclear, which is also carbon free at this stage, but they're looking very much at green hydrogen and looking at the production, the storage, uh, also the decarbonization opportunities in country, in South Africa. And they've made this money available and they're going to be issuing a request for proposals, uh, which is not really their style. It's being done through the KFW, their development bank. It's a very large uh, development bank that the German government owns. They don't usually operate like this, but they've, they're wanting to look at all the opportunities, whether they're real projects or otherwise fi financial instruments or subsidy mechanisms that can start getting these early anchor projects being developed, which, which are important for the green hydrogen trajectory to be sustainable. We need the cost of green hydrogen to come down massively. And we still see there's a premium to be paid for green hydrogen relative to 
hydrogen that comes out of refineries from gas. So we need to have these electrolyzers scaled up. We need to see uh, big uh, investments uh, around the world, and South Africa being one of the locations, especially in these uh, high potential wind and solar locations, to see how far we can drive this cost of green hydrogen down. Because if we can't do that, then this key, this Rosetta Stone to decarbonization, is not going to be able to be translated. So we need, uh, we need this to be happen, and th we need this to happen during this decade, because this is the decade where everything needs to be put in place for this big push to 2050 towards net zero. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what responses come in. And they need to disperse this money, I think, which is great, in a very rapid format. So that by end of 2023, this money must be dispersed going into South African projects and up to 200 million euro. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity to showcase our green hydrogen industry, even though it's at a nascent stage, to show that we can be competitive in the space. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.